Welcome to The Issue Is, Fox 11's political show talking what's hot, what's important, what's affecting you. I'm Alex Michelson. Tonight, the issue is immigration. President Trump reverses policies after devastating images and audio of kids being taken from their parents. Will all of this be forgotten by summer's end? Plus, the issue is the first lady's messaging. What could Melania Trump have been thinking to wear a jacket with that slogan on a visit to detention centers? We'll break it all down with our panel, political commentator, Republican strategist Michael Reagan, co-host of the popular YouTube show The Young Turks, Anna Kasparian, and blogger, YouTube extraordinaire, Perez Hilton. The issue is starts right now. And thank you so much for joining us. We've got a great panel here to discuss really the big issue of the week. One issue dominated this week more than any other, and that is immigration. This cover of Time magazine has gone viral, showing President Trump and a small child crying while being detained at the border. Then, a rare reversal from President Trump, signing an executive order that stops kids from being separated from their parents. Here to discuss all that, our panel this week, conservative commentator Michael Reagan, Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks, and blogger and YouTuber Perez Hilton, who created one of the biggest celebrity websites of all time. What an interesting group we have here. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate <laughs> Good to be here. it. Good all right, be immigration, your take. Well, uh, first of thing, first of all, Today, they've already talked to the father of that little girl who said she was not taken away from her mother. In fact, her mother was deported in 2013 and unbeknownst to the father, who has three other kids with her, came back to the United States with this little girl. She was not crying because she was taken away from her mother. So it's a false picture that's put on Time magazine about this and they won't back off of it even though the father has told them, hey, not true. Well, I think time is refusing to back off of it, even though they did issue a correction about how uh, the girl was not taken away from her mother because of the fact that the girl still represents the trauma that a lot of young immigrants face when their parents are being detained or searched at the border. Now, regardless of what happened to that little girl, you've got to keep in mind that because of Trump's zero tolerance policy, 2,500 minors were ripped apart from their family members. They, and they're currently in, ripped but apart. They, they were ripped, ripped apart. apart. They were taken Nobody away. Rip them no, away. but that's exactly what happened. That's you have, what, that's the you have, you know, that, but that's exactly what happened. Do you think that uh, the kids? You don't think they were cages did? either. Well, the, yeah. no, no, but you said cages. But that, that's the program that's used before they end up in HHS in a place where they play all kinds of games. They're not treated terribly all the way through the system, and you're making it sound they, like they are that. placed you know they in detention. They are placed in detention. Uh, this characterization of a summer camp-like uh, environment is just patently untrue. The government's untrue. doing the best it's, they can with all these people coming in. A better you know, way to handle you know it they, is to not they, detain the children. If, that is costing taxpayers tens of millions what would of you dollars. Do, turn them around at the border and put no, them on a bus? No, I would not. I think that there's a better way of doing what? it. You, well, you can have uh, a situation where you improve the way we monitor those seeking asylum rather than just allowing them into the country, which is a valid criticism from those on the right. Now, we have ankle bracelets. We have all sorts of ways of monitoring people. I mean, we monitor Americans indiscriminately here in this country. So why can't we do so a better you job tracking them? So you putting an ankle bracelet yes. on these people when they come yes, across? Yes, I would, I would. And when they don't show up at court, what do you do? Well, if they have ankle bracelets on, we know exactly where they yeah. are. So no bad guys Perez, have gotten it off. Let's get Perez into well, this conversation. Your take on all this. Well, I wish that I could ignore Donald Trump, but he is omnipresent. And even though I don't follow him on Twitter, he shows up on my feed. And just today, he was tweeting up a storm. He is painting... Democrats and liberals as people who don't want to reform immigration. And I just don't think that's accurate. I mean, even earlier this week, Donald Trump himself posted a video of Democratic leaders talking about how bad the uh, immigration problem is in America. Democrats want to fix the immigration problem. Hillary Clinton herself had very specific ideas and even warned us. She warned us that what Donald Trump has done, he was going to do. Yeah. And we didn't listen to her. But and then people still voted for but him. I mean, the president talked about this issue this week and his worldview when it comes to strength versus weakness. Let's take a listen to that. If you're really, really pathetically weak, the country's going to be overrun with millions of people. And if you're strong, then you don't have any heart. Does he have a point there, Anna? 
Well, I just think it's hilarious that he's accusing anyone of being weak after he offered, he was like a monkey offering all his bananas to Kim Jong-un the second Kim Jong-un was complimentary. That was weak. Now, I'm in favor of diplomacy. I think diplomacy makes a lot of sense. But remember, Trump is the kind of person who concedes right away when he's dealing with someone who's authoritarian or someone who's a dictator. Now, with that said, I think that, you know, this characterization of being weak is inaccurate. I, I do believe that Congress needs to pass comprehensive immigration reform. But you can do it without separating children from their families. You can do it without resorting to a zero tolerance policy. You can do it without prosecuting anyone who tries to cross the border. Uh, because, look, I think that behind the scenes, and it's not being talked about enough, there's a huge money-making scheme. There are private detention facilities that love this. They are getting government contracts to the tune of tens of millions of dollars each. One of these uh, detention centers, Southwest Key, has uh, an executive, the head, the CEO. He's earning uh, nearly a million dollars now 1. in his salary. 1.6 million in 1. 2017. 6. That's and the our company got, money. The company got paid $1 billion from our government so do you to think house that, these children. So do you also think that this, is, this may be a scam? Oh, I think there's, a, oh, yes, there's plenty of scams. When the government's involved in paying money out to people, there's a lot of scams that, in fact, are going on. Uh, and, and that's what's really sad. It, it's a game that is played in Washington, D.C. Listen, we've had an immigration problem since my dad, Simpson, was only back in 1986. Nobody's tried to solve it. Go back to Obama when he had the Democrats in the Senate, the House, the, and, and, and himself in the White House with a 60-vote majority in the Senate. Never even talked about immigration reform. Now it's a big issue. Yeah, talked about and and that's, a real, that's a real problem. Yeah, let, let's talk about one other thing that, that was interesting. Last week on our show, we had Anthony Scaramucci. That made a lot of news. That's but we scary. also had Jane Wells <laughs> here as well. She was part of our panel. Several different national news outlets picked up on what she said during the panel discussion. Let's play that and get your reaction. You may not like this president. He has broken the mold. But if by 2020 we have GDP growth near 4%, yeah. we've got a market like this, we've got record low unemployment, we've got more jobs than job applicants, yeah. and even our allies start to say, we don't like you, but let's do something to make trade, we got to have you, and yeah. our trade deficit starts to shrink, and maybe we have peace in Korea, <laughs> how do you not reelect this guy, even if you think he's a buffoon? Perez, does she have a point? And has that calculus changed at all this week with what happened on immigration? I won't vote for him. Uh, at what cost? I mean, I think a booming economy is great, but we had a booming economy under Barack Obama as well. He turned our ship around. When he went into office, things were not great. Growth. Come on, it was 1% growth. We're now closing it on 4% growth in this country. Like I said, at more what people cost? are working. More people are, what's the cost? I honestly well, think, and I hate to say this. What's the cost? I think Mike Pence would do a better job than Donald Trump. And Mike Pence believes in conversion therapy and is an awful human being. Yeah, well, I, I, I want to jump in on, it is true that the unemployment rate is impressive. Uh, it's very, very low. However, you have to look at the quality of those jobs. Many people are underemployed. They're working part-time jobs when in reality they want full-time jobs. Wages remain stagnant. So, And Michael, does the president deserve re-election? The president will be re-elected in 2020. One reason is the Democrats have nobody. They don't have a message. They have absolutely nobody to run against the president of the United States of America. The economy is good. People have more money in their pocket. The deal gets put together, as she said, with North Korea. I'm telling you, there's nobody to stop him in 2020. And his base is stronger than the Democrat base that's out there. Real quickly, who do you want to see the Democrats run? I, I am a fan of Bernie Sanders. I'm also a huge fan of Elizabeth Warren. So either uh, one of those uh, senators would be... A top pick if for the me. Democrats who, allow and who, them to run. And who would you, well, vote? Who would, who would you we gotta, want? We got to fight the DNC. Uh, I'm a fan of Cory Booker. Uh, I think he's paid his dues. He's been around a while. Um, and also, you know, he can excite people and get them to show up and vote, which I don't know if Hillary Clinton was able to do. So do you, both, do you both disagree with that argument that the Democrats have no one? I definitely disagree with that argument, but I do like that Republicans are under that impression because we'll sneak up from behind well, every, and get some real. Everybody work said done. everybody said Donald Trump was going to get just killed in the last election, in, in you know back in '16, and look what in the world happened. He won going away with the Electoral College, and I tell you the same thing is going to happen unless well, that the was Democrats also because come up of who he was against. That's true. 
I think almost any Democrat Praise God. may be able and probably will, I think, win against Donald Trump because last time there were so many Republicans that are like, I know he's awful. He's awful, but I'm going to vote for him anyways because I hate Hillary you know Clinton what I do? You that know, much. When I read something about Donald Trump or his tweets because I'm not happy with all the tweeting that goes on, the things he says and demeaning to people and the, and the personal attacks he takes, but every time I'm having one of those thoughts, I wake up in the morning and go, President Hillary Clinton? <laughs> And all of a sudden, I feel better. There's a lot of people that would disagree with you there. All right, we got more to talk about, including talking about Melania's jacket, which was such a big thing. Plus, Roseanne back on TV without Roseanne? How's that going to go over? And closing time. You're hearing the song right now. Should it be bumped to 4 a.m. in California? The issue is, back after this. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay. A little Cardi B over Universal City on this Friday night as we celebrate this weekend. Back with our panel, Michael Reagan, Anna Kasparian, and Perez Hilton. You guys already fired up. Now let's get to the, the, the thing that got a lot of people fired up online this week, which was Melania's jacket. She goes to visit this detention center in Texas. There's the jacket right there. Uh, I don't care, do you? Perez, uh, you said that this was callous. Well, I'm all for making a statement, as <laughs> Donald Trump said she was doing, even though her director of communications said she was not making a statement. I just don't think that day going to do that was the statement to make. Yeah, what's the statement? I don't care? I mean, that, you don't care about the kids? You don't That's care about the president back it, at home? Definitely. The president's saying you don't care about the media, but that even her spokesperson said that's not it what she was saying. It was uncalled for. It was silly. It was stupid. She was great when she arrived. Went in there, met with the kids, met with the people there. Never should have put the jacket on, gotten on the plane. Just her choice of jacket was just absolutely stupid. And whoever works with her mm -hmm. should have seen it mm -hmm. and said Unless something about Donald it. Donald Trump yeah. told her, wear this jacket. I, she doesn't strike me as someone who just does what Donald Trump wants her to do. Um, you know, she put out a statement that was critical of Trump's zero tolerance policy on immigration. I mean, it was slightly, uh, you know, Critical, but still, to have the first lady speak up and say something against the president's policy is pretty big. I, I can't believe I'm defending her, but I don't think that she meant to make a statement. I think she genuinely did care about this issue. I think she wanted to go see this detention center. I think she made a terrible mistake. And I'm more upset with her handlers yes. because they should have advised her and told her uh, that's that's not a good idea. You By the way, those those jackets and shirts that have like graphic uh, statements on them or whatever, like rosé all day, I want to ban them. <laughs> I, I just think they're so cheesy. They look but, ugly. What, like, whoa, let's whoa, get rid whoa, of them. Is it, what's wrong with rosé all day? Well, I, I am a proponent, you have a with I am that? A proponent of rosé all day. I mean, but, you know, being in the White House, you, you know, they have people around who help them get dressed. Yeah, there Nancy Reagan wasn't going to wear way, that. I know. All the way yeah. there. And, and, and the person in charge of helping her prepare to go where she's going Should have said really something. dropped the ball. I, I think you both are wrong on this. She needs to take accountability for her own actions. Oh, no, she's accountable. And she's a former model. She knows the power of fashion. It's more than just what you wear. It's what people see you uh, putting out into the world. And this isn't the first time that she's worn fashionable outfits. I mean, before last year when she went to see hurricane victims, she went super glammed up wearing the Stiletto. most high-end designer so it, pieces. It, is it possible that she was making a statement and that statement was to her husband? I don't mm. care. <laughs> it's know, possible. Who knows? who knows? I mean, yeah. that's the thing about this story. I feel like uh, all you can really do is speculate. And, right. and I think that what we should focus on is that she cared enough to go to this detention center. It's something that she isn't known for doing. She doesn't really get involved in these political I mean, discussions. It's also possible that it was all just meant to be a distraction. Right. All right, no. well, let's talk about another distraction. <laughs> let's talk for a moment about Roseanne, a big issue this week. Of course, the president has praised Roseanne in the past. Now we know that there's going to be a Roseanne show on TV. It's just not going to have Roseanne. She's off the show. It's going to be called The Connors, focusing mostly on Sarah Gilbert's character. Uh, what do we think? 
do we like this? Are we going to watch this? Do you think America cares? Oh, everybody's going to watch the first one. Yeah. Everybody watches the first one. What's going to happen second one, third one, fourth one, at the end of the week? That's what you got to look for as far as ratings. But everybody's going to watch the first one. Uh, I, I will not watch the first one, um, and it's, it has nothing to do with uh, my feelings toward the show or Roseanne or this whole situation. I just feel like there are better things to do with my time. I don't know. I didn't say I was going to watch it. I said everybody else will watch it. Everybody else, okay. I'm, I'm going to be having Rosé. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not a fan of Roseanne, but I am a fan of what she did, which was sign away her rights to any profit participation. Because she created the original show and was one of the executive producers and writers, she was due money for this spinoff. But she said, you know what? Because of what I did, all of these cast and crew members are unemployed now, and I want to give them a job. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but good on you, Roseanne. And I think it will be successful just because people love these characters. Yeah. And also... Uh, now it's almost totally bipartisan. Like, you know, before it might have been more uh, conservative people watching. Now maybe some liberal people might feel more comfortable going back to the show and supporting right. it as well as the conservative people. Right. Uh, I mean, that's really sad. Everything's blocked out liberal or conservative to watch a show anymore. Well, I refuse we, to watch it because of America. her and her tweets. Yeah, yeah but now, you're, watch, now you'd be open. That's interesting. Would, yeah. Okay, let's talk about another issue, uh, closing time. Uh, right now in California, 2 a.m. is last call time for alcohol. There's a, a thought in Sacramento to move that to 4 a.m., at least in certain uh, jurisdictions in this state. Um, some people think this is a great idea. Other people think it could be really dangerous. What do you think, Anna? I think that it's fine. Uh, there are other uh, metropolitan areas in the country that have uh, later closing times. The only thing that I have against it is I usually look forward to the earlier closing time when I'm out with friends and I just <laughs> desperately want to go home, but I don't want to yeah. be the lame person who leaves before closing time. So it kind of sucks for people like me. But look, we're adults um, and we have laws on the books that go after people who drink and drive. Just let us be adults. Let's have a later closing time. Yeah, but you don't say, I, you go to a bar, I go to a bar, we all go to bars. I've not yet heard anybody at bars say, boy, I hope they close at 4 o'clock in the morning. I've heard I it quite a bit. You're, you're, going, you're going to the wrong bars. you got to <laughs> come it, party with me, I, Michael. <laughs> I will. But, but you know, there's no, where are these ideas getting to Sacramento and say, yeah. let's have a 4 o'clock Well, because a lot time. of other places in the country have 4 a.m., yeah, including New York, New York has one. And, the, and people, people make a lot of money there yeah. between, between 2 and 4 in yeah, the morning. Yeah, but Sherman Oaks... And, and these places go to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's true. That's they don't true. go to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. New York never goes to bed, but L.A. goes to bed very early. Right. Yeah. And I think things are so different in 2018 because of services like Lyft and Uber. Mm -hmm. There is no excuse anymore for anyone to drink and drive. I, I see it only as a win. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. All right. Surfing or skateboarding? Which one should be the state sport? Back with our panel next. It's uh, no wipeout. Some 23 million people worldwide consider themselves surfers. It's an $8 billion industry annually, just in the United States. But should it be the official sport of California? The California Assembly overwhelmingly says yes, but some in the state Senate say it should be skateboarding. It seems the divide is between coastal and rural areas. Back with our panel, what do you think? Should it be skateboarding or surfing? What's the logic? I mean, why do we need an official sport? So your answer is neither. Me, I don't. I don't do either of them. But if I had to pick, I'll say you know we have the ocean at our fingertips. Go with surfing. I think fixing uh, the issue of unaffordable housing and homelessness should be a sport in California, as opposed to making a decision between surfing and, and skateboarding. Sorry for the non-answer. Yeah. Yeah. The, the reality is it shows you what they're doing in Sacramento. But right. I, I have to go with surfing because of the ocean, the water, and what is the state of California known for? Yeah, although we got pretty good skateboarding, too. Hey, and Hawaii has, Hawaii has surfing. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Um, so these guys aren't done yet. Uh, they're going to be a part of our bonus issues. We encourage you to go online right now. This is streaming on my YouTube and Facebook pages. We're going to be talking about a lot more hot topics, and clearly these guys are fiery and have got a lot to say. We'll be back to wrap up the issue is right after this.
Cristiano Ronaldo uh, is at top of the news because, of course, we're in the middle of the World Cup. And something you just told me, which I didn't know, he's oh, yeah. named after your dad. His father used to watch Ronald Reagan movies in Portugal when he was a child. And so when Cristiano was born, he named him Cristiano Ronaldo after Ronald Reagan. And he scored four goals so far in the World Cup, hat trick and a header two days ago. He's so doing great. That's who you're rooting for. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, good reason, I guess. Uh, a couple of closing notes as well. We want to take a moment to honor the life of John Mack, who died this week at 81. Mack was a longtime president of the L.A. Urban League and the L.A. Police Commission. He helped unify this city through activism following a tumultuous time in terms of race relations. And Charles Krautheimer also passed away this week. He's one of the top conservative intellectuals and a longtime Fox News commentator. So our best to the families of Charles Krautheimer and John Mack. And our thanks to a terrific panel for sharing your views and doing so with respect and sort of in the, in, in the vein of what both those guys were about. We appreciate it. And uh, we hope you both, you all will come back and see us again. Absolutely. Thank you. That's it for the issue is. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much.